Welcome to this companion video for the Click Recorder. This video is going to help you understand how this instrument works, specifically how to calibrate and play it, uh, and some of the different options that we can choose between on the instrument. We'll also get into some uh, possible failure modes, so stuff that might go wrong with this instrument, what problems that might cause, and what we can do to fix or completely avoid those problems. This is not a tutorial on how to build one of these. That's in a separate video and I will put a link to that down in the description. So whether you made this using the Continuum Lab instrument kit or maybe you sourced the components yourself and downloaded the code from the link in the description or maybe someone else made it and now you got your hands on it and you're wondering what to do with it. This is the video for you. Let's get into it. <laughs> First, we'll calibrate. The calibration routine on the click recorder is of course the same as on all the other click instruments. First, you press the calibration button and hold it down. The LED on the microcontroller will turn on and off again and now you're ready to calibrate. While holding down the calibration button, you now activate all the sensors. That means all the keys, of course, including the octave key on the back plus the breath sensor. Keep in mind that the keys are interpreted in the code as binary sensors, which means that as you calibrate them, you're really just setting a threshold value which will define how much you need to touch each of them as you play to activate it. The mouthpiece is different. When you calibrate it, you're setting a useful range which will have a huge effect on uh, how it works as you play. You will want to play around with this to explore your own preferences. Once you have a calibration you like, then you can save it to memory by pressing the calibration button three times in quick succession. The LED on the Teensy will blink three times to confirm that the calibration has been saved. If you don't do this, then the calibration data will be lost when you disconnect the instrument. So now we're calibrated and we're ready to play. The breath sensor is pretty self-explanatory, you blow in it to make sound. Now, depending on what breath sensor setup you have on your recorder, how well it's put together, and of course the calibration, it might be more or less sensitive and responsive. The bottle top breath sensor, which is on here, uh, if it's set up properly, it gives a very high level of responsiveness. Oh, did I forget to mention? I developed this version of the mouthpiece, which you can play with the surgical mask on for my workshops. It doesn't have an exit hole for the airflow, but instead air filters out through the mask at a steady rate. I talk more about this in the build video for the recorder, link in the description. But uh, I'm all alone here, not doing a workshop, so uh, let's lose the mask and then we can just change this bottle cap out for another one which does have an exit hole and we're back to normal. The keys on the click recorder are set up to work sort of similarly to an actual acoustic recorder, but not quite. On a real recorder you normally have split or double holes or you have to half cover some holes with your fingers to get all the notes. And there are also some quite complex hole combinations, especially when you get up to the second octave. The click recorder fingerings are an attempt to simplify this as much as possible while retaining the basic idea of how the real instrument works. I'll show you all of the fingerings in a second, but first let me just explain the basic concept. For most of the notes, let's say for example this A, if you press the next key down, you lower the pitch by a whole tone. But if you skip one key and press the next one, you go down by a half step. There are some obvious exceptions to this, but rather than talk you through each one, I'll just show you all the fingerings. Another big difference between this one and an acoustic recorder is that here the thumb key is used to control octaves. Press it and you're in the lower range. Release it and you jump up an octave. 
So yeah, not quite authentic recorder fingerings, although I could have implemented those. But if you think about it, those fingerings are made quite complex by the necessities of actual air vibrating inside an actual tube, something that we don't really need to worry about for a MIDI instrument. So I just went ahead and made it simpler and easier. You're welcome. Of course, I'm sharing the code for the recorder on GitHub. So if you want, you can download it from the link in the description and have a shot at changing the fingerings to your taste. I have a couple of videos coming up about how I actually write the code for different woodwind instrument keys. So look out for that if you're into that kind of thing. Okay, so now let's get into the different options and settings. The recorder is quite a simple instrument, so this will be short. Just like all of the other click instruments, you can change the MIDI output from channel 1 to channel 2 by inserting a jumper in option pin 2 on the breakout board. Like on the other wind instruments in the click series, the volume control can be changed specifically. The default output from the breath sensor is continuous controller number 2, but it can be changed to CC number 7 by inserting a jumper into the click's analog pin 9. And that's it for the options. The uh, recorder is a much simpler instrument than the clixophone, for example, so no extra keys, no pitch bend control. Although, of course, as I mentioned, if you want, you can download the code for both of those instruments and have a go at implementing some of those options here. Finally, let's talk about some of the possible problems that might occur with this instrument. Uh, first of all, the uh, click recorder has eight capacitive sensors, which can be sensitive to some kinds of noise. For example, the kind of noise that comes with bad ground connections or ungrounded electronics. For example, the camera that I'm recording on right now has a famously noisy power supply. So right now my instrument is working great. But if I just reach out and touch the camera, the electrical noise from it will start to interfere with my capacitive keys. Check it out. Another typical problem that you sometimes find with capacitive sensors is crosstalk, which comes from the sensors and sensor cables affecting each other. This is much more likely to happen on one of the click instruments which passes the capacitive signal through a multiplexer, especially if you're using several multiplexers, because of the longer connections and added parasitic capacitance, which gives a lower relative resolution. The click recorder connects all the sensors directly to the TNC, so it's much less prone to suffering from this problem. Also, the click calibration routine is designed to take some crosstalk and noise into account. And uh, I've actually found it almost impossible to reproduce this specific problem on the recorder. The breath sensor is an analog sensor, and as such, it's not really susceptible to the same kind of problems that you get with the capacitive sensors. However, you do need to keep an eye on the membrane. If the membrane is too loose, so it's able to flop around or otherwise move in relation to the CNY70 sensor module, then that will be read by the sensor as if it were a legitimate activation. The same goes for a loose sensor module. To fix this, just make sure nothing is able to move around. Tense the membrane if you have to, but not so much that you have to blow really hard to activate it. If the breath sensor only produces noise or no output at all, then you probably connected the three cables the wrong way around or in the wrong order. Make sure that ground goes to ground and so on, and you should be fine. And that's it for this companion video. I hope you found it useful and that it helped you understand the potential and possibilities of the Click Recorder. If you're interested in buying one of the kits for yourself or for a geeky friend or family member, then you can do that over at ContinuumLab.com, where I sell both the Continuum Lab instrument kit itself, as well as various types of Click instruments. The complete kit comes with all of the components and sensor materials necessary to make this instrument, as well as a bunch more. And of course, all of those instruments come pre-programmed onto the microcontroller inside the kit, so even complete beginners can get started making cool MIDI instruments with zero coding and simple techniques. And of course, you can check out the build video for the recorder, as well as all the other click instruments from the links in the description. Take care, until next time, and I'll see you in the continuum.